Hello guys, welcome back. So now here in this session, I'm going to cover a topic called terms of payment, or it is also called payment terms. So here in this session, I'll explain what is this terms of payment or payment terms and how does it configure into SAP. So here, look at here guys, now, Terms of payments are the conditions agreed between the business partner for the payment of invoices. This business partner, I mean to say it could be vendor or customers. Both are business partner guys. Let's suppose uh, right now we are in account payable. Generally, uh, if you talk about the terms of payment guys, uh, it can be part of like, it, we cannot keep it as a part of payable only. Uh, it could be the part of receivable also because terms of payment whichever is going to be set up guys that is going to set up for customer and vendor both So either you can keep it separately or in some people keep it as a part of payable some people keep it as a part of Receivables, but it's not like that under course content somewhere. We have to keep this topic So as per their convenience people are going to keep it somewhere and they are going to teach it, but uh, Don't be confused. Okay so generally uh, let's suppose here during configurations once like i told you that follow my sequence whatever sequence i'm uh, you know like covering here so let's suppose if you are as a consultant if you are like whatever configurations you have to do guys that is going to be segregated in gl then account payable receivable and asset management now here uh, if you talk about account payable receivable and asset management before that, you must have to set up GL account. GL account setting must be there. So first of all, which setting is going to be done, guys? GL account. But before GL account also, what's, what is there, guys? Enterprise structure must be there and basic setting must be there. So in which sequence you have to do the configurations, I'll explain here again. So whenever you're going to do the practice, <clears throat> because let's suppose you have created one company code. Right later on once you finish all the topics again you have to for the practice means like it's not like that only one company code you have created your practice teach and everything so you become perfect in order to remember all those things you have to create multiple company codes so how in which sequence the practice is going to happen first of all enterprise structure and then basic setting basic settings so in this sequence first second and third gl setting must be there after that you must have to do gl settings these three settings must be there then what will happen then this fourth and fifth you have choice fourth and fifth Okay, sorry, actually I have to keep like this, fourth, and then fifth. So you have a choice, okay? Whether you're going to keep AP, AR, or AR, it depends upon you. Fourth number AP and then fifth number AR, or else fourth number AR and then AP. And then you have to go for six minutes, you have to go for asset management or asset accounting or so called asset accounting. So this is the sequence today. This is the best sequence to practice. Now here, so what is happening? Let's suppose uh, terms of payment I do. Terms of payment mean, means it is going to be used for vendor also and it's it is going to be used for customer also. Right. So now here terms of payment means sometimes what happens if somebody let's suppose these three will be there in this sequence. After that, if somebody is going to cover account receivable first and account payable later, then a, then in AR itself they are going to cover terms of payment. Okay. So don't be confused that okay somebody has kept is the uh, a, a, it is uh, this terms of payment as a part of account receivable. Now I'm keeping as a part of payable. It could be the part of anything. Okay. Course content means topic is going to be part of a particular uh, we are going to keep it somewhere under certain what to say this one whether it is the part of ap ar gl etc right so but as the terms of payment is a common you can say it is the part of APR code. now here we'll be back on 
covered topic called terms of payment so terms of payment is what guys look at here payment terms are the conditions which is agreed between business partner for the payment of invoices whichever invoice is uh, let's suppose okay we are in account payable so take example of vendor itself now multiple invoices we have posted multiple invoices we have posted and different different vendors are there okay these are the vendors okay here these are the vendors so this is vendor and against this vendors multiple like let's suppose this invoice i have posted against this vendor this invoice i have posted against this vendor now if you talk about the terms of payment guys so there will be some negotiations because who is going to make this negotiations guys purchase department tata motor will be having purchase department so what is the work of purchase department the purchase department is going to find out always they will search new new vendors in uh, from the market uh, because the thing is like we cannot be dependent on uh, uh, particular vendors very few vendors or one vendors or two vendors right always there should be some competitors this is how we are going to get get the best deal right so now new new vendors they are going to and they will negotiate multiple negotiations will be there in terms of price in terms of delivery in terms of payments everything right now as i told you all the purchases whatever the purchases purchases are happening in uh, like like business to business procurement in the sense from tata motor uh, sorry tata motor is going to procure from let's suppose a particular vendor so <clears throat> both are an organizations so organizations to organizations if any procurement is happening or if any sales are also happening those are happening on what on credit basis right credit basis means we have purchased the goods right we have purchased the goods today let's suppose delivery of goods happen today but the payment is going to happen after 30 days after 45 days after 60 days so this is what the payment terms guys okay so purchase department is going to negotiate with the vendor that this is what the conditions if you are going to deliver so and so item to us we will make payment after 60 days from the delivery of goods so vendor is also having a sales department they will also negotiate no it is not possible we are not allowing in 60 days and all so we are going to we are expecting in uh, let's suppose uh, i think some noise started guys so now anyway so now here the uh, let's suppose vendors vendor is also having a sales department which is going to negotiate and they will say that no 30 days they are saying 60 days let's suppose later on they have agreed on 45 days so this is the terms of payment that once the goods are going to be received after 45 days the payment is going to happen right this is what the conditions likewise here also 45 days here also, uh sorry actually now so likewise so i think we came down okay so now here 45 days here we are having let's suppose but this vendor contract is of 30 days right this vendor 60 days again 60 days so likewise different different vendors because it it's not like that a single raw material is going to be purchased guys multiple different different nature of materials are going to be purchased right so now here uh, different different payment terms are going to be negotiated right different different payment terms are going to be negotiated with the vendor now so let's suppose such kind of 100 different kind of payment so how come it possible to remember is it possible to remember because let's suppose this 4000 worth of invoice we have posted on uh, 0108 2020 right so this is going to be due on which date guys let's suppose it is going to be due on 14th of 09 because if talk about why 14th guys 45 days so here 31 days the august month is having 31 days so it is going to be so going to be due on 14th 09 so this is let's suppose if the this is called posting date 
if the invoice is going to be posted on this date it is going to be due on like let's suppose it is going to be due on 14th so this is called due date right sorry guys some in between like might be some noises appearing might be some uh something happening in the next year so kindly ignore this uh, noise anyway so now uh here what i'm talking uh like this terms of payment means let's suppose it, so as per this the days we have agreed so if the invoices are going to be due uh, sorry invoices are going to be posted on this day this is going to be due on 14th likewise here in this case also same thing here here for this let's suppose for vendor c it is going to be due on 38th august itself right so this is how here for this one what is happening due on let's suppose so if the same date it is going to be due on which date guys so it is going to be due on let's suppose uh 29th 29th of 09 2000 Right. On this date, it is going to be due. This is how. So look at here, guys. Is it possible to calculate the due date manually? Thousands of vendors are there. Thousands of invoices are going to be posted on daily basis, right? Thousands of invoices are going to be posted on daily basis, isn't it? So how come it possible to remember that? Okay, with this vendor, our negotiation is a 45 days. With this vendor 30 days with this vendor 60 days likewise we'll have we will be having 90 days uh 50 days 55 days 25 days 15 days even in that like multiple other conditions also will come like let's suppose certain discounts also sometime vendor offer like discounts if you are going to make payment in these many days i'll offer five percent discount or ten ten percent discount this is also going to be considered so is it possible to remember those discounts now it is not possible because thousands of vendors are there so what is happening guys and if you talk about the due date calculations like let's suppose if we are going to post the invoices invoices so is it possible like are we going to calculate the due date manually if the manual due date calculation is started it's it's like hundred of resources required to calculate the due dates only because thousands of invoices are going to be posted on daily basis if it is a large organizations the thousands of invoices or might be more invoices are going to be posted on daily basis so due date calculations if manually somebody is going to calculate the due date and then invoices are going to be posted in that case what will happen guys there might be a chances of mistake also because let's suppose here the invoice is supposed to be due on 38th of august instead of 08 if somebody is going to put 09 then what will happen vendor is instead of receiving the payment in one month vendor is going to receive in two months of course vendor will not be happy at all with such kind of payment right so now what is happening generally so no need to calculate the due date manually why because in sap we are having a configurations called terms of payment configurations or payment terms configurations if you configure this payment terms that is going to be assigned directly to the that is going to be assigned directly to the vendor master okay it is going to be assigned directly to the vendor master so what will happen guys what is the benefit if terms of payment is going to be assigned to the if terms of payment is going to be created let's suppose terms of payment here is going to be created what is that let's suppose here uh, tm45 so tm45 is going to be assigned tm30 again tm30 is going to be assigned tm60 so this likewise multiple terms of payment is going to be created several terms of payment is going to be created and at the time of creation of vendor master in vendor master itself we are going to give this terms of payment so whenever invoice or invoices are going to be posted automatically system is going to trigger this terms of payment which we have assigned in the vendor master and the due date is going to be calculated by system automatically okay look at here so how the work become easy because due date calculation is happening automatically why because based on the terms of payment which we have defined here even in that like discounts also will be there later okay i'll try to create multiple things are there in terms of payment guys later on once i get the time i'll try to record a separate tutorial there are lots of things in uh, you know terms of payment but right now at least like you guys should have a better understanding about this terms of payment how does it how it is going to configure how it is going to work right if you know this functionality and all then only you guys will be able to understand this concept so here 
this terms of payment is going to be set up this is going to be assigned in the vendor master and from master data system is going to determine the terms of payment automatically okay this is what the concept now here i'll come back on ppt once again so look at here terms of payments are the conditions which is agreed between between business partner business partner i told it could be vendor and it could be customer as well right the same thing whatever we are discussing uh, in terms of vendor guys the same thing will happen in the in terms of customers also because we are going to purchase or procure the things on credit basis what about the customers they are also expecting the same thing from us right so even the, the terms of payment it means like customers also let's suppose i have sold something today so we are expecting the payment in 30 days or 45 days so while posting the customer invoices the terms of payment is required this is how we will come to know that this invoice become overdue but still we have not received payment from vendor sorry from customer so whatever overdue invoices are there that is going to be sorted out by uh, sales department and then they are going to escalate the matter to the customers that already invoice become overdue by a margin of 15 days or 20 days the payment is still missing so let us know what is the status and all right so terms of payment is equally important like it is going to be set up for vendor and customers as well now the conditions define the due date and the cash discounts offered for the payment of the invoices within a certain period of course as i told you due date Due date is going to be calculated by terms of payment itself automatically, even if vendor is offering a kind of discounts. Like vendor says that okay, terms of payment is in 30 days agreed. But if you make payment in 15 days itself, we are going to give you a 5% discount. Right? So is it possible? Let's suppose if some uh, somehow if we are able to release the payment in 15 days itself, right? And so that five percent discount also supposed to be calculated and it is supposed to be posted in our books of account right so this discount also no need to remember or recall the discounts manually guys the discounts also can be given at terms of payment level itself so if the early payment is going to happen in that case if we are eligible for the discount automatically system is going to system is going to uh, what do you say calculate the discounts and it is going to be posted to the separate account that is called discount account that i'll show you practically so that you guys will be having a clear understanding right terms of payment enable the system to calculate a cash discount and invoice the same thing whatever i have explained here right the terms of payment level enable the system to calculate a cash discount and the invoice due date this is what the major use and terms of payment generally is a client level setting guys why because it is not going to be assigned with any company code terms of payment is not going to be assigned with any company code it means when we are going to set up the terms of payment it can be used by all company code okay so now i'll do one thing guys so in next session i'm going to explain how to set up terms of payment okay the configuration part is quite easy very simple configuration steps are there and uh, how does it works that once we create once i set up the terms of payment i'll show you practically that how system is going to trigger the terms of payment right and uh, if we are let's suppose here once again the noise started guys okay anyway so let, let's suppose if you have assigned a terms of payment in vendor master and at the time of invoice posting let's suppose if you have to change the terms of payment then which terms of payment is going to be considered by system these all things i'm going to explain in next session so that's all in this session guys in next session i'll show you how to do the configurations at all